Well, is at midcourt, ready to toss it up. Temple in the home white, SMU in the road blue, and we're underway, and emphatically, SMU has the ball to start things off. We'll see man-to-man -man defense on both ends for most of the night defensively. First turnover of the night forced by Temple, and now Josh Brown will lead the way for the Temple Owls. Brown's had most of the reps with the first team the last couple of days. Jesse Morgan, he's wears number three, one for 17, shooting the other day against Tulsa. So SMU will have the ball. Can't waste possessions if you're Temple playing against a team that likes to get the ball inside. Want to make sure you maximize the opportunities. Both these teams come in with 12 victories, both three and one. A little skittish right off the shoot. I wonder how they calm themselves down when they get off to starts like this. I think a lot of it has to do with just being in familiar situations. I think just touching the basketball, being out there on the floor, eventually you do get comfortable. Shot clock is winding down. It did not reset. Here's more inside. Shot off the mark. Bond, the leading rebounder in the American, pulls down his first board of the Knights. One minute into the ball game, no score. Nope. SMU doing a good job with the high low. Frazier up top looking for more inside. That time more with a nice little move in space. Just unable to convert it, Tom. Here's Brown toward the baseline. The steal by Nick Moore. Nick Moore assessing as he comes up the floor, goes down low. Nice move. Marrera is able to turn around with a little baby hook shot. Marrera. You see the point of emphasis for them. They are trying to get the ball deliberately, Tom. Get the ball inside, put pressure in their initial fast break offense. See whether or not Temple's defense can get back early and be set that time, unable to stop Marrera. Jesse Morgan with a quick trigger. They were really working on that today. Get it and shoot, but be in good position to get that shot off. Had his feet set squared to the basket in rhythm and like you said Tom listen to his coaches got that shot off quick enough before the D can even get there he was 0 for 13 from beyond the arc in the game against Tulsa we mentioned 1 for 17 overall he'll pull down the rebound well those are numbers I can never relate to 17 shots <laughs> You mean you never took 17 shots in a, in a week, game? In a week. <laughs> in, in a week. Not never in one night. Well, there you see those numbers. Brand Dunphy told us today at, at shoot around. He said, "What do you do as a coach? Do you take him out and say, hey, don't shoot anymore, or do you just let him keep firing and hope he gets on track?" Speaking of firing and getting on track, Nick Moore. We talked about him at the top of the program. The main perimeter threat has the ability to not only initiate the offense but get his own shot. Does a really good job of moving once he gets rid of the basketball and then is ready to get it back, Tom, to be shooting at the end of the shot clock. Averaging just under 15 per game. There's Bond for three. Jalen Bond. Bond with seven threes this year and two three pointers tonight for the Temple Owls. Bond doing a good job of stretching the defense that time. Marrera a little hesitant to go out and play him, Tom. Here comes Dakosi and the blocking foul is called on it. So now DeCozy will go to the free throw line off the foul. DeCozy a 73% free throw shooter. Larry Brown told me yesterday that one of the keys, not turn the ball over on the road. I mean, you don't want to turn it over anywhere, but mostly on the road. And some of those home run passes, and we've seen two of them already. He worked with a huge emphasis yesterday in practice on some of those home run passes. It's important to value the basketball and to execute a perfect example Tom earlier on in the year they played Indiana outshot them 56 to 32 out rebounded by 14 and yet still lost. Mm. Why because they call they committed 19 turnovers on the road. That's a killer. That's something they're trying to avoid here tonight in Philadelphia. The whistle blows the foul. Gaining valuable experience as the freshman something that will pay off for Fran Dunphy and the team in years to come perhaps even a little bit later on in this year absolutely neither team is substituted yet Keith Frazier the sophomore the former McDonald's All-American gets to the baseline Herrera's jumper no good yeah, it's always a pleasure to be around a Hall of Fame coach like Larry Brown or anyone of his equivalent and talking to him about this matchup he said Allah you know we always like to play the right way and the right way on the road and conferences make sure that the other team has a hard time scoring easy buckets 
and then on the other end of the floor make sure you're getting good looks every time down the floor chances are if you handle both of those aspects you're going to come away with a win on the road shot clock under 10 brown for the two point jumper now that gives Temple an 8-5 lead under 16 minutes to play here in the first half. SMU goes backdoor. Frazier with a beautiful reverse layup with a little Frazier. extra torque off the glass. And how about Ben Moore looking a little bit like Aaron. Correct me if I'm wrong. The quarterback for the, the, the Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> couldn't remember how he zipped that pass in right there. The back door more with the nice pass in traffic. Many of us are American football I fans. Remember Aaron Rodgers. How do you forget his Allah name? is more of a football <laughs> fan. It's worse than to have him on your bench constantly, Tom. Aaron McKee, you want to go run something by him? Want to know what it's like to play at the next level? What you need to do? Run it by that young man. He certainly knows a thing or two about what it's like to be a professional, a long-term NBA professional. Jesse Morgan makes the first free throw. By the way, I hesitated about the playoffs for the Sixers because you never know in the Eastern <laughs> Conference. You just never. I thought you were know. channeling your inner Jim Mora there. <laughs> playoffs. <laughs> Three-point lead for the Owls. His name I can remember. <laughs> well, it's all coming back to you now. Now you're connecting the American football game. SMU with the basketball. Ryan Manuel puts it on the floor, dribbles toward the baseline. Marcus Kennedy in for the first time. Well, the jumper from Frazier is no good off the front of the rim. And here comes Brown helping to lead the break. He does not have Out numbers. Of yep. Out of rhythm. Turnover. So three turnovers now for the Owls. There's Will Cummings. We talked about uh, his status for tonight. We said it at the outset that it was unclear. We kind of got the feeling today that he would play because he went through a rigorous pregame routine to see if that lower leg injury was OK. We understand that he will play tonight. How much? Well, we're not sure. Hasn't been very demonstrative as well, Tom. Kind of quiet. It looks like it's taking its toll on him, that injury. Here tonight, like, as we said, Cummings not in the lineup. Let me correct myself. It's the first foul for Josh Brown. They didn't call a foul on the opposite end. They called traveling, which we did note. A terrific offseason, and he played for a legendary coach in high school, Bob Hurley Sr. at St. Anthony's of Jersey City. Played many pickup games in White Eagle Hall, just like our very own Al Al Donabi. <laughs> what is it like playing pickup games in White Eagle well, Hall? Well, you've got to pick up the chairs first. It's a bingo hall, so when you walk in. <laughs> now that means that Mark Williams will check in. Kennedy on the year is a 54% free throw shooter, but just 14 attempts in a very limited amount of time. Williams will indeed check in. Interesting, Tom, coming into this game, Marcus Kennedy shooting 53.8 from the field and 53.8 from the line. You don't really get to see that that often. Identical numbers from the line and from the field. Well, we mentioned he's been limited because of academic reasons, missed the first 10 games, and now playing in his seventh game, his numbers are increasing. And he makes both of those free throws. You figure his percentage from the line's going to get better. As soon as he gets his legs underneath him, he gets some game conditioning. It's one thing to be riding a bike, trying to work out on the side. It's a whole other animal to come out here on the floor and try to hold on the bodies for 40 minutes a night. Shot clock is under 10. Brown leading the point, working against Nick Moore. Got to operate quickly. Here's Bond, long range three. Tried to bank it home, no good. Marrero with the rebound. Boy, they worked on that play a lot today at shoot around. It looked so effective in shoot around, just didn't work there. Here's Manuel down low. Kennedy with a two handed slam. And Kennedy doing a good job of carving out a little bit of space on the baseline that time. How about the penetration by his teammate Brown finding him? Not an easy pass to catch in such a short space, but. Kennedy made that one look easy and a nice strong finish. I have to admit, uh, yesterday they practiced at Villanova because the Lee Course Center wasn't available. He was very vocal in practice. Dacosi for three, no good, and the foul. Uh, things got a little physical a moment ago. Mark Williams called for his first personal foul. Four team fouls for Temple. Marcus Kennedy, we John mentioned before, went to Villanova to begin his college career. Even though Villanova is one of the best teams in the country, he probably still helped them a little bit, add to their depth. Here's Manuel to Kennedy again, and another two headed slam, this time from the other side. And Manuel doing a really good job of penetrating Tom, and his penetration is drawing so much attention that, believe it or not, somehow they're leaving the bigs on the baseline wide open, and they're paying for it. 
Another three point attempt for Temple no good off the back of the iron Moore with his second rebound six of the seven shots for Temple then from beyond the arc here's Moore way downtown and Brown pulls down the board. We are going to see Will Cummings in just a moment for the Owls. Mark Williams no good. And it will be SMU ball. Two man game that's the second time Tom that penetration from the perimeter has led to an easy bucket inside the recipient recipient both times number five Kennedy. Well you see Will Cummings in the game he's covering Manuel up top we'll keep an eye on him again it's a left leg injury a lower left leg injury. Marrera into the paint whistle blows traveling violation in certain at given times in the game but they respond to him as well. Bottom line is they know they care he cares about them and he's going to put them in a position to succeed night in and night out. Well his team has not scored in three and a half minutes. They got a lot of threes so far in this half. Here's another from Morgan. Good. And what a plus Jesse he's been since Morgan. coming over from UMass Jesse Morgan. It's one thing to just add perimeter jump shot. But Tom the other thing they do him and Coleman is they add bodies to the rotation sure. as well. This rotation wasn't so deep when we saw them play early on in the year. But now with those two added transfers this is a much different kind of Temple team to deal with. We haven't seen Coleman just yet and Marrera gets it over the top of all on Jesse Morgan who came over and knocked him on the hands. So he has four points. He'll go to the free throw line and converts. So five points in this SMU team at practice yesterday. You can't help but be impressed with their size, their ability from the outside, but also their depth. I mean, they've got a lot of guys coming off the bench that are helping this team out. No question. They've got nice pieces. Again, Coach Brown is knows what's missing, what is needed, and what he can instill in practice. And the rest of the time, they work. Well, there's Cummings on the pass to Bond, and he lays it in. A lot of folks think that Cummings is uh, the best point guard in the American. What's the first two points in the paint for Temple? The lead before that basket was 10 0 in favor of SMU. Points in the paint. Here's Moore into the paint off the front of the rim. Bond with the rebounds. Cummings so up the floor. So important to have you as you're referring to coming so important to have him out on the floor Tom even if he's not doing the scoring he's still a guy that is presence out there. Morgan a little frustrated with himself realized that he had the hot hand Tom but not being disciplined on the defensive end of the floor causes him now to take that hot hand and go to the bench. Both of these coaches have talked about shot selection how important it is coming into tonight's ball game. Do you like shot selection so far for both these teams. I think that I think it could be better but it hasn't been bad this far. That's not a bad shot selection right there from Nick Moore the, the diminutive one coming in the middle of the lane with the giant killer. But you it could always be better Tom. They can always be getting better shots and I think when it comes to Saint to SMU in particular they're bigs. You've got to play to those bigs. five points for Moore. 940 to play here in the first half coming slips ball is turned over and here comes Brown to the pass to Manuel who lays it in. Well, that's good teamwork right there. And a team that likes to play in the half court set because they are so big Tom will take advantage of opportunities to run out that time quite judicious saw an opportunity and took advantage of it. Not always known as a running team the must SMU Mustangs. Well we just saw Manuel in fact uh, the coaches said that Ryan Manuel is the best defender uh, for the Mustang and you can see that they say every single game he's out there. And that's why he's covering Will Cummings okay. right now. Took the words right out of my mouth if you could defend for Larry Brown you were going to find yourself out on the floor more often than not. Round for three. Boy, when you can make three pointers it keeps you within reach in any ball game. In particular when you're not known as a team that can dominate on the inside and get some close to the basket scores. And that lob unable to come down with it but here's the three the good ball movement and finding Josh Brown from the perimeter. That's there are four of nine from beyond the arc. Now they're down by two with the ball with a chance to tie or take the lead as we head toward the eight minute mark here in the first half Williams from the baseline. Good. 
run. We're tied up at 20. He was money last year in this matchup from the outside. And a second time, Herrera having to cover a big out on the floor. Just a little too hesitant, Tom, to go out there and contest those jump shots. Second time, Herrera got paid, had to pay for it. Nick Moore with the missed shot. So now Temple and SMU even at 20. Eight minutes to play here in the first half. And Devin Coleman for three. What a spark he's been coming off the bench. Again, we talked about it. Just the idea of having more bodies in the rotation. Tom, they're just not bodies, though, Morgan and Coleman. They're very effective as well. Temple on an 8-0 run right now. And there's an errant pass by Moore, cut off by Cummings. Owls lead it by three. Brown into the paint. Probably should have taken that one right to the rim. Instead, tried to pass it out. Manuel, finger roll and a beauty. George Gervin would have loved that one. Finger roll. That was a nice play there in transition, getting it all the way to the basket. You got to wonder about Temple's defense, though, a little bit, Tom. Not doing a great job of hustling back and limiting those breakouts by SMU. One point lead for the Owls. Williams find Cummings for three. No good. Too much more. Here he comes. He'll slow things up momentarily. And he thought about swinging it over to Brown. He had Brown wide open. The hot hand elected not to give it to him. Another turnover forced by the Owls. That's seven turnovers for SMU. Brown this time goes right to the basket. And another offense. <laughs> a you know, basketball. Yeah, just to be digging. Yeah, general? well, just in general. Just digging the origins and roots of things. John breaking it down. Got to give John credit. He's a little under the weather today, but he's working hard, doing a heck of a job. Here's SMU, a little zone now by the Temple Owls. It's going to take a lot more than that to keep John Rothstein down, though. <laughs> we were thinking about uh, giving him some fluids, had him on the training table a little bit earlier. We've got some pictures to share. More to come on that. Melo do in the game for the first time. Here's Moore's jumper from the free throw line. No good. And Bond will take down the rebound. Bond, the leading rebounder in the American Conference. Defense was all over him. He would have been better served with a little pump fake, Tom. Would have had the lane wide open, uncontested. That time, took the easy way out. The quick shot with defense all over him. Six minutes to play here in the first half. Coleman explodes, kicks it out to DeCozy for three. No good. And now Manuel leading the break. Manuel assessing going right to the basket, draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw. John, did you realize that there was a style for uh, being on a training table? You know what? Hyman Roth in Godfather 2, one of the legendary characters in cinematic history, was right. Good health is the most important thing. More than success, more than power, more than anything. No question about uh, it. Well, it was nice that they were able to find you a comfortable place. Hyman Roth played. Can't compete with John Rothstein. He is... Roger Ebert and everybody else uh, combined. Well, off, this stuff. off the main free throw, 24 23, 5 35 to play here in the first half. Will Cummings along the perimeter and a blocking foul called on Nick Moore. That is a demonstrative person to begin with, but you could tell that he was more or less really just into his own trying to get through the injury and I think he was preoccupied so to speak Tom trying to get himself ready not the same vocal leader on this team but you know what forget about that the important thing is his presence out on the floor even when he's not scoring his presence out on the floor is paramount Coleman may have forced that shot the save by Bond but now it's five on four for SMU Frazier pulls it up but then his pass inside is off the fingertips of Marrera and Coleman into the open floor lays it in. Frazier a little too nonchalant with that pass. Coach Brown I'm sure we'll have a talk with him in video session. He's got to value the basketball make the crisp simple play. It's interesting he was talking about turnovers and they do turn the ball over a lot but it is evident when you watch them. Hurting them. Make the simple play young man. Well, five turnovers in the last nine trips for SMU. Temple with a one-point lead. Foul last season. Sophomore from Texas. He was able to transfer because of the coaching change. And plus, he was dealing with some family issues back home, getting closer to home. The NCAA allows that if there's a hardship. Coleman for three. Go! Three point basket! 
Boy, and Fraser wasn't far off of Coleman as well that time. It's kind of play where you think, not a good shot, not a good shot, but he squared up and knocked it down, even with Frazier in the vicinity. He has the last eight points for the Owls. Now the lead is four. It's the largest lead of this first half for the Temple Owls. And you can see the spark that him and Morgan bring to this lineup. New additions to this Temple Owl program. Tough pass. Yeah, he tried to force that one to Cozy. He wasn't ready for it. Here comes Frazier, two on one. Kennedy cut off by Cummings, and Frazier caught it along the base. 30% three point shooting team. But they'll take it. Will Cummings uh, did not start, but has played a majority of this first half off the bench. Bond against Kennedy kicks it out. Coleman along the baseline. Tough shot. Oh, Bond's put back no good. Well, he had a chance to come back down and then put it back up. And there was nobody around him either, so he would have had room to come down and operate. More quick release. And then Bond with another rebound. Bond has five points, five rebounds in this first half. Tom SMU down four. The only thing keeping them in statistics, statistically speaking, is the points in the paint. The advantage is 16 to four. One of the few. It's time for Temple. Devin Coleman. Devin Coleman will check out. Last time we saw Temple was against St. Joseph's here in Philadelphia. From his point of view, of letting you continue to do something the wrong way when he's there. You have the good fortune of having someone like him point out your mistakes. 240 to play here in the first half. 28-24. Browns jumper, no good. Rims out. No field goals in over four and a half minutes now for SMU. That was a good rebound that time in traffic by Bond. It was a pretty good shot, too. It absolutely was. SMU doing a good job of getting good looks. Question remains whether or not they can knock them down. Quarter jumper for Dingle for three. No good. And Moore pulls down the board in front of Devontae Watson. Here comes Manuel leading the break, going right to the cylinder. And after a couple of missed shots, Temple comes out of the pile with the basketball. Cummings decides not to shoot, decides to pass. Watson. And the ball rolling all over the place. Devontae's up, Tom. Well, he checks to out. Points. Yeah, he checks out, and Williams checks in. DeCosi tries to draw the foul, and he does. It's a three shot. A three point shot. Just get your hand up. Coaches will not complain if you make the effort. See Coach Brown a little frustrated there on the sideline. Tacozzi makes his first free throw. Here's the second. It's good. He'll get three out of St. Joseph's Metuchen in North Jersey. At 13 points in this matchup last year at home against SMU. The two teams split the two games. Substitution. Watson back in. Williams out. This is the largest lead of the half for the Owls. 31-24. It's an 8-0 run. Kennedy off the ball fake. SMU should like this matchup against Watson. He just can't get it go. A little too hard off the back of the iron, and the foul called. Fate. His minutes are down from the beginning of the year, but up from last year. Front end of the one and one is no good. And the ball is knocked out of bounds by DeCosi. Larry Brown's team, last 10 trips, 0 for 6, three turnovers, two free throws made. But they're over six minutes without a field goal. One of the things we talked to Coach Jerry Hobby, one of the assistants for Coach Larry Brown, said that's what kills them is they've got the ability to take over games, but then they shoot themselves in the foot by turning the ball over. Cummings doesn't get the roll, but Dingle tracks down the loose ball. They work it along the perimeter. Plenty of clock left for Temple on this possession. And you see again the importance of Will Cummings. So smart, pulls the ball back out. Resets the offense. Make sure as we come down to the closing seconds here, they get a good shot. And there it is. That was a good shot. That was a high percentage shot after really good ball movement that time, partner. Boy, you get as close to the basket as possible. That was a good shot. It's amazing what a little patience and ball movement will do. But these kids are young. Who has patience at this age? <laughs> Not this group. <laughs> Traveling.
who is from Philadelphia spent some time away at Clemson before transferring back to Philadelphia. My mistake I misspoke at Virginia Tech. I was thinking of the ACC Tom another ACC team. Although there's so many transfers <laughs> around college basketball yeah. it's easy to get them mixed up. <laughs> That is a, a sign of the times. Certainly was not the trend mm -hmm. back when you and I were in college, but things are different nowadays. Things Di don't work out for kids, they go elsewhere. Difference of one second between shot clock and game clock. Morgan fires anyway, and SMU will have a chance. Five seconds to play. Amelogu right to the basket, lays it in. For a concert last night. And uh, they talked about that, that their success and lack thereof at times this year is because they've turned the ball over a lot of times. First thing that the coaching staff told us when we spoke to them was that they had to limit turnovers, in particular on the road in a conference game, Tom. Got to value the basketball and make sure you get the most out of offensive exchange. Well, that's the seventh three of the night. So they ended the first half with a bunch of threes. They begin the second half with another three. It's a 10 point lead, largest lead of the night. For the Owls. And Tom right away, DeCozy doubles his point total three at halftime, knocks down the first three here of the second half. Frazier tries to go to the basket for Marrera. Marrera can't get position at his call. MU. Well, he's coached a lot of games during his life, and when he says something, you know that it's true when it comes to basketball. And he really did preach the turnovers. And as John said, not a whole lot of offense or good shots, and you saw that from that graphic coming out. And frustrating for a coach of his caliber to have his team really, Tom, beating themselves at times throughout the course of this game. As much as Temple has a lot to do with it, I think SMU really does control its own destiny and at times shoot themselves in the foot by not being careful with the basketball. Well, there's a steal and another turnover. Last 19 possessions dating back to the first half, 10 turnovers for SMU. That's half your possessions, Tom. I mean, that's Incredible. a killer. Every other time down the floor, you're not even getting a shot up. Now, this is getting silly now. They are living from beyond the arc as Jesse Morgan converts another one. That's eight threes, 24 of the 39 points coming from the three point line. And if you're Frazier, you've got to refer to your scouting report because Jesse Morgan, your mark, dust. Well, he'll go to the free throw line. Anechionia picks up the foul, his third. Kennedy will check in for SMU. Moore checks out, Ben Moore. So Frazier gets a second free throw. Frazier, sophomore. A McDonald's All-American played last year didn't play as many minutes as I think people anticipated it was more because of his defense than his offense. Well a lot comes at you when you're a freshman in particular when you're playing for a Hall of Fame coach like Larry Brown a lot is asked of you but Frazier is a guy Tom who is really maturing and coming along right now you talk about Temple on a 26 to 8 run and I think that's really what's Carrying the day right now as they find themselves Temple with a 13 point lead. SMU's got to make some adjustments and get back in this ballgame soon. Under 18 minutes to play here in the ballgame. Manuel's jumper is good. Got a nice bounce. Couple of them to get that bucket to go. One of the few times where they actually finished an offensive exchange, Tom. Moved the ball around and got a good look at the basket. Able to convert it that time. Let's see whether or not they can get more of those offensive exchanges and become productive here in the second half. The cozy against Manuel. Down low to Bond. Backing in against Marrera. Tried to swing a pass. There was nothing there. Smart to reset it up top with Brown. Shot clock under 10. Brown pull back jumper no good. And Kennedy with the rebound and the foul. Call. Temple had an 11 point lead. With 10 minutes left, they had a 10 point lead. While he was still out with that lower leg injury, they just couldn't hold on. And part of it was Jesse Morgan was pretty cool from the outside as Marcus Kennedy picks up his eighth point of the night. Big boy showing you some range as well. Certainly known for his back to the basket exploits that time. A little face up from 20 feet, Tom. I like the acknowledgement too uh, to Sterling Brown, who made the pass. Larry Brown was vocal about that yesterday in practice. He said, I want to hear you acknowledge the guy who passed you the ball when you scored. Morgan off the back of the rim. It's a team game, Tom. Very rarely does any one person score all by himself. Got to count on your teammates to get you involved. Off the miss on the Temple end, a miss on the SMU end. 
fast. For the most part, SMU doing a good job of limiting SMU's offensive rebounds. Temple doing a good job of blocking out and finishing those defensive exchanges. SMU is one of these teams times because of their size, they do like to pound the boards, unable to do so due to the attention to detail paid by Temple. You know, Bumpe got personality. He's got the youth and enthusiasm. There's nothing that he does. He reminds me of what Ralph Waldo Emerson said. Nothing great has ever achieved in life without enthusiasm. What are we going to have on tonight? We're digging Telecast. deep, Tom. We are digging deep. <laughs> Under 16, 16 minutes to play here in the second half, 41-32. Temple is on top. Temple has been exploding from beyond the arc in this ball game. Eight for 19 as Mark. Coach Brown, not used to losing a lot of games in <laughs> Philadelphia, Tom. Let alone having to travel across country to come and lose a game here in the city of brotherly love. Morgan to the basket, too hard. Kennedy another rebound. Thinks better of the outlet pass to midcourt. Tough to find a small Moore in the middle of traffic as well. Moore was calling for the outlet, just couldn't see him amongst all the other big bodies out there on the floor. Kennedy down low, off the glass, gets the roll and the spin off the iron. Old school, drop step, takes a middle. Defense does a good job of stopping middle. He drops right back into the baseline, too quick of a move, uses the glass. That's an old school kind of play right there. Very effective. Well, and Temple will answer with one of the, its own. Quinn DeCozy right to the rim. Nine point lead for the Owls, under 15 to play. Did that nice job holding Nick Moore in check tonight, too. Josh Brown doing a good job denying him the ball back as well. We talked about how Moore's a great last year for the Owls. No, it definitely has, Tom. And you look at Temple's four and five right now. Jalen Bond and Obi and Eshinoya. Temple is now able to switch on every ball screen, one through five. Ala, it's very similar to Cincinnati last year. Hustle gets rewarded by going to the line. Well, 12 points now for Marcus Kennedy. He has the last six SMU points. Will Cummings in for the first time in this half. Kennedy makes the free throw. Cannon Cunningham is going to check in for Mark. When you talk to NBA scouts about the senior from Texas, they like his potential. Big upside for the 6'10", 225 senior. Three thirty-seven. SMU is pulled to within six. I said Carmen Cunningham. It's Cannon Cunningham. I am certainly sensitive to people not getting your name right. <laughs> so I apologize to the entire Cunningham crew. With the shot clock at two, Cunningham pulls down the rebound off the miss by Will Cummings. And NBA scouts love what they love about Cunningham is his size, his ability, lateral movement, has a nice soft touch as well. Tom, all he's got to do is put on a few more LBs, figure out the game in the post. Would not be surprised if he becomes a professional in this sport. There's Marrera, his runner, tough shot, no good. Rebound pulled down by DeCozy. And now DeCozy sidewinding up the floor. Morgan open for three, no good. Frazier again, how many times are you going to attempt? and missed money tonight, and particularly when he's got his feet set like he had there. Could he be too wide open on that last exchange? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's Frazier's approach, leaving him wide open. <laughs> Larry Brown's not going to let that go on too much longer. Frazier's still figuring out the game as a sophomore on both ends of the floor. Seven minutes into the ball game, Cunningham fouled on the Kennedy to play alongside Cunningham. They've got a plethora of bigs from which to switch on and off. Nick Moore covered by Cummings. Off the screen by Kennedy. Kennedy had the open shot, nearly had that ball stolen away. Now Frazier to the basket, leaves it underneath for Kennedy, and a foul call be foul trouble. Anichi Onya has four, and Jalen Bond now has three personal fouls. Frazier for three, no good. And DeCozy with the rebound. Was that an okay shot? It was a decent shot. Just again, one of the things, one of the many things that aren't going SMU's way. Shots just aren't falling, ones that they normally are able to convert. That was in rhythm. 
Cummings backdoor pass goes right past the teammates are surprised when the ball goes up. If they're expecting it to go up, then it, chances are it was a good shot in rhythm. Well, let's see if SMU can get more than one shot off. Their offensive rebounding numbers excellent coming in, but tonight only two offensive boards. Quick shot by Frazier. That's a tough one. And he doesn't get the roll or the bounce, but the loose ball picked up by Manuel. Moore back to Manuel, just as we were talking about offensive boards. SMU gets one of the foul. Stanford traveled over to Gamble Arena and beat Stan, uh, UConn, so I'm sure that players like Ryan Boatwright, guys like Omar Calhoun that were on the team last year, are going to be looking for some payback, Tom. Get back at the Cardinal. Ryan Manuel makes the first free throw. Here comes the second one. You're going to hear the words free throw <laughs> a lot for the rest of this ball game because Temple uh, already with 17 fouls. SMU tonight is 10 for 10 from the line. We've got 12 minutes left to go. That is an overabundance of time. A four point game, 43 39. Coleman in the game for Temple. So is Mark Williams. Daniel Dingle in. He dribbles that one off his foot. Shot clock is down to 10. Got to get in something quick here. They look a little bit unorganized. Coleman in the paint to the corner for Dingle. Shot clock at three. Probably should have shot it a little earlier. And Cunningham with the rebound. Here comes Nick Moore leading the break. Alley open. It was cut off by Daniel Dingle. But yet another SMU turnover, Tom, without even getting a shot up that time. Careless with the basketball. Moore with the turnover. Coleman's three, no good. Battle for the loose ball. Williams underneath. Off the glass. It's good. It looked like Marcus Kennedy and Cunningham kind of fought each other for that ball, and then it caused the loose ball, caused the turnover, and then right into the outstretched hands of the Temple players in the lane. Easy to that time. Should have been an SMU rebound. Cunningham pushes his way back to the basket. Bond with the rebound. Well, you see why Jalen Bond is enjoying a good year on the boards for the Owls. Eight and a half coming in. He has seven tonight. So with the departure of Anthony Lee from last year's squad, and Anthony Lee averaged nine in change as far as rebounds per night. So this is a good filler, if you will. Jalen Bond coming in, giving you almost the same number. Williams from the baseline, where he was wide open, it just didn't go down. I think Bond may have gotten a, shaken up a little bit on that battle for the rebound. Ooh, Kennedy right to the basket with a high step. 15 points for Marcus Kennedy. Made his mind up as soon as he got the basketball. Saw a little bit of a lane all the way to the basket. Kind of gave you the Euro step as yep. well. That was nice for a big. Showing you some versatility. It's down to a four point ball game. Off the side of the rim for Williams. He's missed back to back baseline jumpers, one closer than the other. Here's Moore. Cunningham tips it back out toward Moore. Loose ball and Moore will pick it up. It was deflected by Coleman, so it's not a backcourt violation. But no change in possession, so the shot clock does not reset. Moore from 17. Just doesn't have that friendly rim. Whistle checks in. Marcus Kennedy's out. Marrera's in for SMU. Cunningham is out. Nine minutes left to play in the second half. Will Cummings hasn't really been a scorer tonight. He turns the ball over. Here comes Nick Moore with Frazier. Frazier rightfully pulls it out. Smart decision that time. Isolated out on the wing. Him and it was Jesse Morgan out in the printer. Decided to just initiate the offense. Get it back up top. But Marrera really wants it inside if they can get it to him. And now got, he has it up top. And he's got Williams on him. So I think he feels an advantage there. His teammates though. See it differently, Tom, not giving him the basketball. Another turnover. Boy, Moore has eight turnovers. No, they're not going to give him the turnover because they get it back. The three is no good after the shot clock was winding down. That was awfully close to the eighth turnover for Nick Moore in this ballgame. So frustrating, and you cannot have your point guard with eight turnovers, Tom. When you look at good point guards, their assist to turnover ratio is usually in favor of the more assists. It's at Best. At worst, it's two to one. But right now, Nick Moore struggling to get his offense going. Coleman's three rims out. Here comes Moore leading the break for SMU. Peeking in, goes to Frazier. Pass cut off by Morgan. 
Cummings underneath for Coleman. Oh, he got it to roll around the rim. He almost tossed that a little with too much English. Ten points for Coleman. Looking over at Coach Larry Brown, he's probably thinking to himself, why are we making it this hard for ourselves? Keep the game simple and work on what makes you a good team. Right now, SMU not playing to their strengths at all. Unable to even run an offense, Tom. Careless with the basketball. 31 minutes since the last three made by SMU. They last led 24 23. Frazier doesn't get the spin, but he'll go to the free throw line. Well, it's going to age that 74 year old man on the sideline <laughs> unnecessarily. Listen, if Allen Iverson didn't age him unnecessarily, <laughs> I don't know if this will. Well, Larry just never expected him in practice. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> lower your expectation level leads to a lot more happiness. Well, there's an offensive board off the first miss from the free throw line for SMU. 47 42, seven minutes to play. SMU's gone over 30 minutes of game time since their last three. Kennedy sweeps his way to the basket. That's a sweet move. If you're going to give him space, End time, Marcus Kennedy is going to score on 99% of the defenders in this country. He's got good patience, nice soft touch, and Tom has the ability to go over left or right shoulder. So how do you stop him when he can go both ways? Dingle into the paint, whistle blows, and the foul called against SMU. This game, and it's funny that with 33 and a half minutes into this ball game, they're starting to really recognize the big inside. Well, we also recognize that his minutes are increasing too. Well, and that's something that SMU fans have a lot to look forward to because he is gaining some conditioning right now, game conditioning as opposed to practice conditioning. And wouldn't be surprised if his minutes increase, game in and game out, and you see how important he is. His minutes out on the floor are something that no one can deny. Wow, behind wow. the back bounce pass to Jesse Morgan from Will Cummings. Great movement without the basketball. And why is Will Cummings so important to his team even when he doesn't score? Perfect example on that last exchange. The faci facilitator in the Temple uniform. Four assists for Will Cummings, 49-44. Marrera, foul going up by Bond. It's his fourth. He said he wasn't sure how much he'd be able to play. He was hoping to give it a go. Well, played 12 minutes in the first half. And he's playing a majority of the second half off the bench. Bond will check out with four. Not a guy, Tom, that they lean heavily on in as far as scoring. Right now, Will Cummings has no points in this ball game, but he does have, as you mentioned, four assists. His presence out on the floor is the most important thing. Thinking back to their last game against Tulsa with 16 minutes left to go he gets hurt they're in the ball game he goes out and everything changes they wound up losing that game so Fran Dunphy and the rest of the Temple faithful know how important number two is out on the floor 49 46 SMU's missed just one free throw tonight 13 of 14 big reason why they've climbed back into this game Coleman into the paint over the top of Marrera he misdirected that shot and now SMU has a chance to tie this ball game up with a three Kennedy looking for a high low of Marrera. It's not there, so they pull it back out. Frazier into the paint, kicks it to the corner. To the baseline, Marrera heading to the basket, gets it to go. It's a one point game. Well, we thought Marrera was going to step out of bounds. He was way under the bucket, using his length to look. We've seen so many teams, not just in college basketball, but in basketball in general play smaller SMU goes against the grain they have two legitimate bigs absolutely Marrera who didn't play in the States until he came over to Community College South Plains Community College part of the Angola national team continues to get better and better foul on the floor fouls Temple has nine so a fresh 35 for the Owls Brown and Cummings on the floor at the same time Brown running the point Mark Williams, Dakosi, and Morgan. SMU extending their defense, Tom, in denial, 30 feet away from the basket. Even the bigs are out denying. Dakosi with a fadeaway jumper from 10. It's good. Dikosi. Well, we talked in our ATT fast analysis at the beginning of the game that he would have more of the burden from an offensive standpoint. Well, he has 10 points tonight. 
he hasn't had to carry a lot of the burden. And he has he's done a really good job, Tom, in the role with Cummings a little hurt. Is he hasn't forced anything either. That's the thing. I think last year, if you were to watch Quentin DeCozy, a lot of times his shot selection was questionable. Sabu has made it a three-point game. Under four minutes to play. Manuel has it stolen away by Cummings. Great switch by Cummings. Manuel thought he had an open lane. Cummings was right there when he turned the corner. That was the perfect uh, sort of description right there of help defense. Listen, it's never one guy trying to stop another guy. Even man-to-man -man defense is called team man-to-man -man defense. Frazier up top covered by Morgan. Looking inside for Kennedy. Gets to the paint. Gives up his dribble. Resets things with Moore. Moore trying to find Kennedy who's really battling with Mark Williams inside. Instead of giving the ball in the post, he calls him out for the pick and roll and then allows Kennedy to operate from the elbow on in. Tough shot. With two on the shot clock, he gets the fader to go down. Showing you a little bit of his game. Yes, he's got back to the basket moves. But that time, the little mini step back from the elbow knocks it down. Eight of ten from the floor, 19 points, six rebounds for Kennedy. DeCozy outside for Morgan. He'll fire from way downtown. Williams with the offensive rebound, swatted away. Kennedy got a piece of it. Tom, those shots were falling for Morgan and Temple a little bit earlier on in the game. They're still getting those. You can see right now SMU where they go on their offensive exchange right now. Do they go inside? To the hot hand Kennedy, or they use him as a decoy. Let's see. I think they'd be crazy not to go inside. You know what? You know where I stand. I'm a big guy. Always feed the big guy, especially when he's got it going. Nick Moore bounce pass inside to Brown. Inbounds goes to Moore. Covered by Cummings. Shot clock under 10. Moore to the basket off the back of the rim. Offensive board by SMU. Decent offense and offensive rebounds have gotten SMU back into this ballgame, Tom. Not shooting themselves in the foot like they did for the majority of the first half. Nick Moore converts and SMU has the lead. 52-51, they led it 24-23. That was the last time they had the lead. And now under two minutes to play, the Mustangs have come back and have taken a one-point lead. DeCozy into the paint, draws the foul, and he'll go to the line. The foul on Ryan. Seeing the foul, Tom, I'm curious to see Coach Dumphy's approach as we enter the last 145 of this here game. Go, go. Earlier on in the game, they had perimeter guys like Coleman and um, Morgan who were knocking down perimeter shots. Tom, those shots aren't falling right now. So do, do they go to those guys, continue to go to Morgan? And Brown and hope that those shots fall eventually or do they make adjustments and look to get the ball going to the basket off the dribble. Well DeCosi makes one of two to tie this ball game up. The other thing too is they're not making as taking as many threes as the first half. They were six of 16 in the first half two of eight in the second half. We're tied up at 52. 135 to play in the second half. Brown back to Moore thought about a three covered by Cummings heck of a matchup offense and defense and you can see the attention that Meeks gets I should say Kennedy gets because he was double teamed from the front and the back and Moore converts to three 36 minutes since the last three for SMU it's 55 52 Mustangs Yes, SMU is a big team. Yes, they've got a lot of guys that they play inside with, but their leading scorer is that main guy right there, number 11. Did the mini tip or not to make the move or to get his teammates involved? A reminder, Ryan Manuel cannot run the baseline. That was not a made shot. It was a miss off the rebound. And Manuel looking inbound, gets it into Moore. Covered by Cummings. And Temple content to just put a little bit of token ball pressure applied by Cummings. A high low UCLA set to begin with. Nick Moore for three, and it's no good. Loose ball, and it's saved by Brown. Here's Kennedy. And that was a huge save by Sterling Brown. Fortuitous bounce to Marcus Kennedy. How about the emphatic finish? Leaving no doubt. 21 points for Kennedy. It ties a career high. Temple down by five. 33 seconds to play. Cummings draws the foul. Second half, but Cummings to the line. 30 seconds to play. Yeah, 
And he can't convert the free throw. He's an 80% free throw shooter. So this will remain a two possession game. But Erling Brown checks out. For 30 something minutes of this game, we thought that SMU was completely out of this. Yep. Really didn't even look like they knew how to go about getting themselves back in this ball game. But Tom, boy, are they back in it right now. I don't know if that's the case every single practice, but it certainly was yesterday. Maturity, Tom, the the junior, the redshirt junior. Got a foul for Temple, right? I can't see why they're not fouling right now. They're going for the steal, not getting it, and then allowing the clock to go. A little mystified right there. And Frazier with the two-handed jam. Mm -hmm. 18 seconds to play, 59-53. Largest lead for SMU. Cummings down low to Nicosi, and Nicosi off the glass is good. No foul. I saw him mouth. You've got a foul. We've got a foul right away and, with 11 and I, seconds and to I play. I think he's probably upset at his team for not fouling yeah, earlier before. And there's the foul to Cozy. Fouls Ben Moore, who's a 17 of 14 from the line, is SMU. All you've got to do now is the road team make your free throws and close out this game. And Moore misses the first. So again, it will remain a two possession game, even if he makes this one. SMU trying to come on the road after winning at Central Florida this weekend to win here in Philadelphia. And it's now a five point game. Coach Brown imploring his guys to get up, pick up full court, to make Temple use more clock than they want to. Here's Jesse Morgan for three. No good. One second to play. And.